Hey everyone, you're with Mind Body Solutions again. And Amy and I, both teachers at Mind Body Solutions, are going to go through a really important video. And it's one of two on the sensation of inner awareness. Now, in this video, we're going to want you, to whatever extent you're capable, to practice along. Because the most important thing when you're trying to teach any kind of adaptive yoga is you have to feel the sensations that you're going to try to help facilitate either in yourself or in others. And so the idea that you're practicing along with this like quick practice really matters. Now, and, and the other one, another insight of our method is that the greatest commonality, if you're a teacher, between you and your student, regardless of their condition or regardless of their level of ability, the greatest commonality between your practice and their practice is your practice. Because we're talking about universal sensations and principles in poses. And so it's not dependent on the particular pose. So at this level, sensations really matter and you need to feel them in order to facilitate them. One of the lines that I like to say is that some really dumb guy said, be the change you want to see in the world. That would be not a dumb guy, that'd be Gandhi. And that would be a very deep truth. And it's really true when you're trying to adapt yoga. So <clears throat> often um, inner awareness is thought to be a mental activity. And it what we're interested in, because remember we're trying to level the playing field of adaptive yoga. What we're interested in is inner awareness that travels from body to mind which is different than mind to body. And they're both, one is more kind of introspective and, and mentally led. One is letting the brain be receptive enough so it, information and input from the body passes through the brain into the mind without judgment. And in this respect, one of the lines we like to say is that, this, that the process of moving inward in your mind-body relationship should itself be recognized as a sensation. Now, this is such a deep thing and foundational to our method that there's an audio installment of this 45 minutes or so going into the details of how we think this occurs. But the point is, is that inner awareness, we've talked about this before, mind enters the body through reference, and that's often like muscular action. But what we're trying to uncover and reveal in our own practice and to our students is that there's a level of sensation that's not psychological or mental that is beyond muscular action, beyond our ability to control and move and influence directly. And there's a level of sensation coming out of the nervous system that is accessible and to the, to the mind if the brain lets it pass through. And that's the foundation of so much of this yoga practice, which is different than meditation. Because remember, what we're trying to show is a level of inner awareness, a balance between what's inside of you and what's outside of you while moving. So that, that requires a whole different level of integration. Um, what's really important, I think, in recognizing the yogic methodology is that they're trading and creating um, a method that reveals part of the human experience. So yogic methodology has really figured out, pioneered, whatever the word you want to say, different techniques and mind-body practices that reveal subtler parts of our experience. Because it's, it's the, the being able to hear, listen to, receive, utilize subtle sensation that is, I think, in my opinion, the most important part of a refining yoga practice, not how complicated the yoga poses you can do. It's whether you can receive more while you're acting. And this ties back to a line I said in a di different video, when effortful effort becomes effortless. Muscular action is never going to be effortless, but there's a concurrent sensation of effortlessness that can travel in movement that is essential to the yogic realization. Training the mind to hear that level of experience 
is why there's repetition in practice. So one of the things that that we try to break down um, into two big categories, inner awareness. One is the more passive side of inner awareness, right? And then the more active side. So there's a level of receiving that can happen that is not, doesn't have as much action, action so you can recognize it in action in, in the movement of asana. So now we're going to run through some practices that are our practices aimed at refining inner awareness. And I'm going to have Amy balance on the four corners of her feet. Now, already that's an instruction that you don't just get to look down and do it. You also have to go inward and start to feel balance and also find what would be the four corners of your feet. So she's actually trying to feel into it and it's real practical inner awareness where in space the four corners of her feet would be. Another way to help you find the sweet spot of, of, of balance is I'm going to have Amy lean forward a little bit onto the balls of her feet and now more input is coming to her brain, through her brain to her mind because she's off balance. Now I have to go back on the heels, right, and not fall over. And now she goes into the center and because she has structure around the center, she can find the four corners of the feet better. That inputs to the mind. And so she gets to open to the space between where the structure was. Because prana, pranic realization is always going to be helped by structure. Right? And so now I'm going to have her go in multiple directions. So I have Amy hit down through her heels, lift her chest, and stretch up to the top of her head. Think about the functions. Those instructions make the mind travel to different parts of the body. Right, so there's a there's a balancing of effort and she stretches down through her fingers and makes the whole body come more alight. But now as she's balancing in her whole body, now I want her to do something a little bit strange. I want her to balance in the whole room. So in other words, practice interoception and proprioception simultaneously because we're wired both for what's happening in our body and our relationship to space. So the idea, so the thing about inner awareness is as you find where your center is, you start to be able to feel the space around you too. And that's one of these wild things about the human nervous system. So again, she's trying to balance in spaces like between the shoulder and the ear, opening the space behind her, feeling the space below her hands. At the same time, she's hitting down through the heels and lifting up through her center trying to stay open to what's in to the empty space in the room so the balance here is in multiple ways as soon as amy like if she sticks out your neck as soon as she sticks out her neck all of this changes right the inner awareness was to reveal an expansive sensation in the room so now she's going to come back into balance and feel and grow utilizing the quietness of the sensation of balance that comes from inner awareness and learning how to make the relief of that go into the action. This is going to be repeated over and over in asanas. So now we want to demonstrate a different form of passively realizing inner awareness. And remember, there's a big connection between the development of inner awareness as opening the door to the sensation of receiving. Because there's a simul simultaneity in yoga poses where, where you have to receive and act. And people with all levels of ability and, and different conditions are going to have no disadvantage at the receiving part of an asana. And it's not how much you can do with the active part of the asana. Like, can you do super complicated poses? Like, put your leg behind your head. What's crucial in the realization of a yoga pose is being able to integrate what you're receiving from the quieter part of you that's opened, the door to that is opened by more inner awareness. And it's the integration of the quieter part of you with the more active part of you. That intersection and that integration is what makes for good yoga not how much you can do with your outer body. So here we want to show a different one, a different form of receiving. And one of the ways that we like to teach this is you develop inner awareness 
by really getting better at receiving and being aware of the sensation of relief. So we're gonna bring in another one of our teachers and Amy and Bethany are gonna go through a, a, a practice of supporting the back of the sternum, which has multiple reasons for it. One is it learn, teaches you how to receive. It also teaches you how to give and support someone else. But it also is developing the awareness of the receiving part in a very critical movement in asana, which is learning to lift your chest effortlessly, not just with effort. So along these lines, they're going to show. So Beth Lee has, has turned and I'm going to stand behind her. Notice this time, however, that I'm not right behind Bethany. I'm actually off to the side just a little bit. And that allows for a little more ease in my shoulder and, and my elbow. Now, as we talked about with this particular um, activity, uh, alignment and how you enter the space of a person is very important. So when I, when I go to just gently take my palm and bring it between my shoulder blades, I notice that my body's really not at a very um, good place of, of ease here. Notice I'm, I'm having a big hinge and I've got some tension in my shoulder and my elbow. So because there's a height difference, I'm actually going to try this on my knee. So I'm just going to come down to one knee. And it's sitting around one knee versus two because here I'm a little bit walking. So I'm going to come to one knee. I can, I'm off to the center of where it is. So I keep my shoulder and my elbow relaxed. And then I have a much easier, in fact, I'm come a little bit closer. I'm a much easier and more natural movement here. So I'm going to simply place my palm between your shoulder blades, almost like I'm simply supporting the back part of the the heart. And what's really important too is how Bethany then learns to reconfigure around the sensation of support, which is all developing in her awareness. You feel the hand, you feel the change in your mind-body relationship, and then you learn to go with it. So when Amy pulls it away, there's a loss, and now she has to learn the asana part, which is how to sustain that sensation. Here it comes again. The reconfiguring around support is one of the ways that you really train inner awareness from body to mind. Can you receive the support and the relief through the entire vessel? This is how more advanced practitioners do hard poses. They know this relationship between receiving and action. And when Bethany begins to, to mold around my hand or receive the pose, I'm just going to pull out there, um, then I begin to feel it too. I feel it in my body and I feel a, a movement downward and then even a list in my chest too. So there becomes this, um, this interaction between the giver and the receiver in, um, in this way. In, in which is, you know, one of the hard things about yogic realization is it seems so ethereal or abstract. But what Amy's describing is exactly what is evidence of our interconnection with each other and with the space around us. The, the fact that these sensations travel through different bodies and can be felt not, in the, not exactly the same, but some core part of it is felt, that's actually evidence of what's really going on here which is their simultaneous connection and disconnection. Now we want to show you a different, very subtle exercise, which has to do with receiving that is going to have Bethany seated and Amy helping in a certain way. But notice a couple of things. So this is, I have, a, uh, I have Bethany sitting back in her chair, which has, that's off her, she's on the backside of her sitting bones, which is going to make it so, although it may be more restful, it's going to make her, her receive less of the depth of the experience. The other thing I want to point out is that because Beth, the, the chair is a little bit high, we have something underneath Bethany's feet, again, to get the conditions of relief, not strain, to be the foundation of the mind becoming more subtly aware of, of sensation from body to mind. So I'm going to ask Bethany to come out onto the edge of the chair. And what this does is make her sitting bones more active in the pose, right? And, and, and more alert. And right away, you can see that she's sitting up taller, that there's more activity up through the spine. 
because time has been taken to feel, right, the bones in, in the rear end. And so this, what we're going to do here is I'm going to have Bethany inhale and take arms up over her head. Right? And this is a seated version of a pose called Urdhva Hastasana. Right? And there are a whole bunch of things going on in this pose. She's dropping her shoulder blades. She's extending up through her fingers. There, of course, for everybody, there's a tendency to overuse the diaphragm. So in fact, because she's trying to be a really good student, she's actually gripping subtle sensation at the diaphragm. So I just like gave her an adjustment there. And now I want her to hit down through her sitting bones. And remember, poses don't end at the terminus of the body. So for her to feel her sitting bones where her fingertips are and extend beyond her fingertips actually is a requirement of, of and requires inner awareness to know where you stop, where the rest of the empty space begins. Good. And then take your arms down. So this idea of already you start having different principles happening right here, the, uh, the awareness of the sitting bones, the alignment, the the how you feel and go beyond your poses, all those things are already in play. So now we have Amy come up behind her. So now again, I'm going to have Bethany inhale and take her arms over her head, feeling her sitting bones, her feet, all these things hitting down, going beyond the head. Now you got your diaphragm better, right? And so you're hitting down and going beyond your fingertips and even open the sensation on the palms, on the skin, right? And don't keep that and stay active. So what Amy's going to do is come and touch lightly with a thumb and index finger on each side of her wrist. Now, I hope you're doing this at home and have someone at home because now I know that the sensation of relief just flooded her whole body, right? And that, and that is like, what? How could... And Amy's not actually pulling up, but I know that Bethany experienced not only a downward drop, but a rise in her pose. And all this happened with a simple touch. And then it goes away and she's going to have to struggle again. And here comes the muscular action, right? And now we're going to do it again. And she gets to receive a second time because repetition makes the mind more awake, right? And here comes the touch on the bone, not that much. And there goes Bethany growing again because the sensation of relief coming from inner awareness, coming from what she can't control actually is seeping into her pose and she's turning it into action. And then when, when the release, when the reference goes away, she has to work again. That was a long time for her arms up. So we'll give her a break here. And, and the idea here being is that little things can create cascade into big sensations at the subtle level. What I think what happens and why people with disability often, I think, over time become in some ways better yoga students is that they don't have the loud sensation blocking the subtle sensation. And so it's a big thing that, that Bethany felt that what happens is proprioception, take your arms up over your head again. Her mind, although she can tell and feel herself where it is in space, it's not till Amy touches her wrist that the mind certainly knows where the body is in space. And once that happens, conditions of safety are met. All this is coming. Can she receive this cacophony of changing sensation in her body? That's why you're training the mind in inner awareness to recognize and receive changes from body to mind, from subtle to more tangible sensation and opening to all of it. On this final one, of course, we always want the student to do it on their own too, right? And so now, Bethany, take your arms up over your head, right? And so now, one of the most important things in the development of inner awareness is to elicit both in yourself and in, in, in the student that you're trying to teach is the process of memory. So right now, I want, I'm going to ask Bethany to be more aware of the empty space between each palm, right? And that is going to be, now I want her to go back in her memory and feel the touch of Amy's touch. Actually, Amy, why don't you just do it quick again? So now we'll like confirm it again. Now, when she goes away quickly, now keep that opening and bring with your memory. Because Angar talks about memory being vital to a yoga student, to an asana student. And so she's going from memory into the space between the hands. All this memory of subtle sensation, the practice of subtle sensation, the receiving of things like your, the sensation on your skin, all these things are going on. So the, the, 
the development of the more passive side of inner awareness is it gets, starts with as things as simple as um, softening the inside of your mouth, right? And recognizing the sensation change when you do something like that. Feel the space between the shoulders and the ears. Getting the mind quiet enough in order to recognize that as a change of sensation. All this is enhanced by practice. And the memory muscle and the, the practice ends up transforming how you perceive. Now, the thing about this is that, that using memory, don't think that's just a practice of mental memory. You're trying to use memory of sensation from body to mind and letting them merge into what happens. I mean, this seems so obvious, but, but even like someone shooting a free throw in a basketball game has a repetitive movement and they're feeling their way into the next shot. This is really practical and, and it is something you need to develop in your life, in different places in your life, not just in a yoga pose, but the development of inner awareness is gonna be crucial to opening up the potential of, in your human nervous system, but also in human consciousness. Thank you.